I bought the cheapest pizza oven I could find online. It cost me a whopping $167, which is over 20 times less than even the most affordable professional options. Even compared to most home options though, it's a fraction of the price. So let's open it up and see what we're working with. All right. This is really the cheapest pizza oven I could find that actually uses a pizza stone as opposed to just being like a metal rack or conveyor belt type oven. A lot of those cheap ones out there basically just glorified toaster ovens. This one is a glorified toaster oven with a pizza stone. We may have our first problem already. Yep. So despite how much styrofoam was in here, the pizza stone actually did come cracked. Now I knew that was a possibility based on some reviews that I read, but according to some other people, they were able to reach out to support and they were able to get a new one. So what is it? Is this paint? Oh Lord. Why would they do that? So, so far not the best user experience. I mean, I'm glad they try to protect it at least, but I feel like there was a better way to do that. Anyways, the other reason that I bought this was because in theory, it's big enough to bake nearly a 16 inch pizza and it does it without being too massively big. Massively big. <laughs> and it does it without being too oversized. I mean, 22 inches by 18 and a half by 10. So I mean, it's big, but it's not as big as a lot of the other ovens that I've seen on the market. I mean, some are even bigger than this and they can only bake like 12 or 14 inch pizzas. And for me living in a relatively small apartment, the space saving aspect is a huge benefit. Now there are some other disadvantages related to that, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But first, let's try to figure out this stone situation. So I do have this baking stone, which is about 12 by 15. And yeah, I mean, there's some empty space in there on the sides, but it looks like it would work. I also have my baking steel pro, which is actually 16 by 16. All right, so yeah, I mean, this thing would work, but it is actually on a slight slant. Even that just half inch difference in size makes it so that it rests on this other lip here where it's supposed to it's supposed to be able to rest down here. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but I think this would work. The toppings would probably slide a little bit from one side to the other. So I probably will try it later in this video, but first let's try to get us a new stone. All right, so it's been less than 24 hours. I already got a response from Vivor on the pizza stone situation. And in the meantime though, I found a nice little home for this pizza. But let's see what Vivor had to say about our pizza stone. Dear customer, thank you for your message. We're sorry for any inconvenience caused. Please provide us with a few photos to confirm the problems. All right, so about another 12 hours later, we got another message from Vivor Support. So let's see what they have to say this time. Dear customer, thank you for your inquiry. We are contacting the technician, but we have not received a response yet. Why do they, why do you need a technician? Let me just use this. I'm gonna leave this running for a bit and actually I'm gonna move it over under my hood by my stove because probably during this first run, it's gonna be burning off some of that chemical residue from production and based on some reviews online, I heard that it could get kind of smoky. Yeah, definitely starting to get smoky. Yeah, so about 18 minutes in now, and we're pushing about 675. So it's actually gotten hotter than what it said it was going to. Obviously, my thermometer is probably not 100% accurate, but I mean, that was one of the big advantages that they stated over a home oven is that it heats up so quickly. It's definitely a good sign. So for this first bake, I'm just making my standard New York style pizza recipe. So I'll leave that video and recipe linked below. But since neither my baking steel or the small pizza stone I currently have fit properly into this oven, I came up with another method. And it starts by building the pizza on a screen which is basically just a vented aluminum sheet rather than on a pizza peel like what I would usually do. All right, so I've got my pizza here ready to go. Now with this oven, without the pizza stone, there's basically two ways that I can bake. Because it came with this rack, which can go in either upside down like this, where the surface of the rack would be basically right up against the bottom heating element. Or it could go right side up, where if I were to set the pizza on top, it'd be almost right up against the top heating element. Now I'm not exactly sure which one's gonna be better. But I think what I'm gonna do is start with it upside down. And if I notice the bottom of the pizza starting to burn, I can always just take it out and flip this thing over to get the top of the pizza finished cooking before the bottom burns too much. Again, without a stone, I'm not exactly sure how well this is gonna work, but I figured it was worth a try. And by the way, this thing did seem to max out at about 660, exactly what it said it was going to. So it looks pretty promising.
right, well this actually looks pretty solid. I ended up baking it for about five and a half minutes and I just kept it at full blast the whole time. Now personally, I would prefer a little bit more browning on top, but that should be something that we can adjust just by moving the pizza a little bit closer to the heating element. I haven't looked at the bottom yet, so right, this is my first time using this screen. I thought it was pretty well seasoned, but turns out, Always season your screens, folks. As you can see, not a lot of browning. Even being that close to the heating element, we just didn't get that same browning and charring that we could get from a steel. I thought being that close to the bottom heating element would be enough to brown that bottom, but you know, it feels pretty floppy. So biting into them, they're not as bad as I thought they'd be. They do have a little bit of crispness to them, but still nothing near what you would get with a stone or a steel. I think even if I were to just reheat these on my steel at a super high temp, they'd end up being pretty good. But of course that would defeat the whole purpose. I mean, if I were to have to heat my oven, I might as well just bake the pizza in the oven in the first place. And honestly, the results that I get in my oven so far are better than this one. But obviously I'm not using it as intended. I'm still waiting for my stone to arrive, assuming they're able to send me a new one. But in the meantime, I do have another idea. So this time I'm still using my standard New York style pizza recipe, but I'm gonna try baking on my baking steel, which should help me to get that extra charring and crispiness on the bottom that I'm looking for. But I also wanted more browning on the top. So what I'm gonna do is place the rack in its right side up position and then place the steel on top of that. That'll get the pizza super close to the top heating element, which in theory should get us the most browning possible. All right, so I got the oven fully up to temp here. It took about 45 minutes with the steel in there, which is significantly longer than it did before. If you remember, it took about 15 or 20 minutes without the steel, which makes sense. I mean, the steel absorbs a lot of heat. That's why it works so well for baking pizza. So just naturally, it's gonna take longer to heat up. But the other interesting thing is that once the oven got up to temperature, I also took the temperature of my steel and it had already gotten fully up to temp as well. In my home oven, it takes about 90 minutes for the steel to fully get up to temp. And even then it's only getting up to like 550 or 575, whereas this one got all the way up to like 650. Now, of course, at those temperatures, in theory, stone would be better than steel, but I'm only working with this steel because I haven't been able to get that new stone yet. So given that, if I do notice the bottom of the pizza starting to burn, I can always just slide my screen underneath it after a few minutes to protect it a little bit. Another potential problem with this setup though is, as you can see, it's a pretty tight tolerance here between the steel and the top of the oven. So as I'm sliding off the pizza, it's gonna be pretty tough to, you know, avoid touching the top heating element with the actual pizza. So I have to be really careful. So let me make my pizza and we'll see how it goes. Pretty impressed actually with the level of browning that I was able to get on this top crust here. That was kind of my main concern with this oven, but getting it closer to that top heating element really seemed to do the trick. Now there were a few things here that I would definitely do differently. First one is I would spin the pizza around a little bit sooner. You can see that one side is a little bit more brown than the other. And so I actually left it in the oven a little bit longer than I normally would. So that led to a little bit more grease separation, which for me personally, I don't really like. I know some people do, but again, personally, I prefer a little bit of a shorter bake. So that actually is really good. Probably better than anything I could have made in my home oven already. I would prefer a little bit more crispness, but flavor-wise, that browning on the top really makes a difference. The one thing though, as I suspected, is that the steel is really not ideal for those temperatures. Immediately when I put it in the oven, I could smell burning, and you can see just those really dark charred bits, which actually have a little bit of bitterness to them just because they are so burnt. So I slid the screen underneath after probably less than a minute, but because of that, the crust didn't really have enough time to crisp up. It just kind of charred in some places. Yeah, I really wish that I could try this thing with the stone. And I guess this might be a good time to share the unfortunate news that I did hear back from Vivor support and it's not sounding like I'm gonna be able to get a new stone. Basically they said they couldn't get in contact with the technician, whatever that means. And they offered me a $20 gift card. I told them, no, I can't really use the pizza oven without the stone. I mean, that's the whole point of it. So then they said, okay, well, what about $60 back? Ah, we're cooking with gas. 
well, we're still cooking with electric, but now we'll be using a pizza stone. Problem is though, I couldn't find a pizza stone that exactly matched the one that came with the oven, which is 15 and a half by 15 and a half inches. On Amazon, all the stones were smaller than that, at least all the ones that I saw. So I could have ordered a bigger stone from a specialty site and then just cut it down to what I needed. In fact, I do have an 18 inch by 18 inch stone that I use on grills and things like that. So I could buy another one and cut it down, but I think this ended up costing me like 80 or $100, so it really wouldn't have been worth it. So what I did instead was settle for a round pizza stone. It's 16 and a half by 16 and a half, which is actually exactly the size of the opening of this oven. So as long as it fits, it should be absolutely perfect. It'll allow us to bake the biggest possible pizza. Ah, uh, no. We're gonna need to do a bit of modification here. Well, that was easy enough. Let's give it a try. All right. So I guess this oven is a little bit deeper than it is wide because I didn't end up sanding off the top or bottom, only the left and right sides. I mean, it's a circle, but you know what I mean. Now we're actually ready to make a pizza. But first, we need to talk about today's sponsor, Native. Native aims to make personal care clean and fun with products that are great for you. Their deodorants are aluminum and paraben-free, cruelty-free, vegan, and they're made with ingredients that you've actually heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. And some of you may know, one of my favorite things to do outside of cooking is lifting weights. But with these hot summer months approaching, I don't want to feel sticky and gross every time I do it. Luckily, Native deodorant isn't sticky at all, so I feel fresh after exercise. So I've used the sandalwood and shea butter scent, and I've also used their eucalyptus and mint and their char Scents, all of which are honestly some of the best smelling deodorants I've ever used. And using my link in the description below, along with the coupon code Anderson, you can get 20% off your first purchase at Native. This offer is available site-wide, but just for a limited time, so be sure to stock up and save. So thanks again to Native for sponsoring this video, and thank you for your support. Now, let's make some pizza. So again, I followed my exact same recipe, and since I found that I got a better result keeping the pizza as close to the top heating element as possible, that's what I did here too. The only difference between this pizza and the last one is that I'm baking on stone rather than steel. All right, this looks like a very solid New York style pizza. Definitely the best one we've made yet with this oven. Now the biggest problem I had with it was just because the gap between the stone and the top heating element was so tight, it was a little hard to slide the pizza out onto the oven. You can see the back side of the pizza kind of got pushed up toward the back of the oven, and so it flattened it out a little bit. I had stretched the pizza to about 14 inches and it ended up at about 13, so I guess not too bad. And that's also something that'll get easier with more practice. Otherwise though, this pizza looks super solid. It's got a really nice browning on the top with just a little bit of charring. To me, that's pretty much perfect for a New York style pizza. Wow, I mean, I think this is easily the best New York slice I've made at home. Pretty amazing how big of a difference that browning on the top crust actually makes. And that's something that I've really just struggled to achieve in my home oven. I've tried playing around with the broiler a little bit and it works to a certain extent, but it's pretty inconsistent. I think it's just hard to replicate that same effect of a high heat oven without actually using a high heat oven. Now, even though I was able to get a little bit of a refund, I really do wish that I had the original stone still. I could see myself using this for baking bread or just heating up food in general given that it does heat up a lot quicker than my oven and probably uses less energy since it's smaller. If I had both of these stones too, I could use the top one for baking the actual pizzas and then use the bottom one for reheating slices. Seems like it'd be a really good combination. Even if you buy the round stone plus the oven, you're looking at about $200 total. So that's definitely very solid for this type of setup. But that still had me wondering, how would this oven do with other styles of pizza? So what I did was make a recipe which I consider to be a more sort of artisan version of a New York style pizza. It's a recipe I'm still working on, but so far I've achieved pretty good results with it in my home oven. The recipe is really meant to be baked at higher temperatures, which I simulate in my home oven using my baking steel, along with the broiler toward the end of the baking process. But I was very curious to see if the slightly higher temperatures of this pizza oven would be enough to get us to a solid result. All right, so this one I made here, like I said, is kind of what I consider a more artisan New York style pizza. A little bit of a higher hydration, nicer flowers, stuff like that. And it's basically my go-to pizza. If I could just pick one style that I wanna make, it would be this one. So I had a little bit of trouble again with the launch. This time it was more due to that circular pizza stone. One of the edges of the pizza was hanging off the stone just slightly, and that's something that wouldn't have happened if I were using a square stone. But overall, it turned out pretty good. So this oven still doesn't seem to get quite hot enough to handle higher hydration doughs very well. Again, it does really well with lower hydration, sort of more classic New York style pizzas, but it definitely has its limitations when it comes to other styles. 
So definitely a very solid pizza. Like I said though, I can get a better result in my home oven. The problem with this one is even though it can get hotter, it doesn't have the capability to broil. So if you really wanna get that charring on the top, which personally is one of my favorite things in a pizza, you really just can't do it. But I do have one more idea that I think might make this pizza a little bit better. All right, so what I did was just reheat it a couple slices, which is part of my usual process for my classic New York slice. But for this more sort of artisan style, typically I don't reheat them. Got a little bit more charring on the top, a little bit more browning on the cheese, a little bit more charring on the bottom. Seems to have some nice crispness. So I reheated these still at the max temperature for about a minute and 15 seconds. And they're still not quite as crispy as they would be in my home oven, but they're definitely pretty solid. But of course the big question is, do I actually think it's worth buying one of these ovens? And honestly, it kind of just depends. I mean, obviously this thing takes up a good amount of space. So number one, you have to have the room for it. But number two, it kind of depends on what styles of pizza you like to make. I think if you like to make sort of standard New York style pizzas, maybe Detroit style, or a lot of other styles that don't really require super high temperatures, then this thing does that really well. I mean, like I said, that New York style pizza I made was better than anything I've ever made in my home oven. However, if you want to make a Neapolitan style pizza, obviously that's not really going to work in here. You just can't get enough charring and it's not going to bake quickly enough. And sort of same thing with this more artisan New York style. I mean, you can come up with a pretty decent result, but it's still not going to be as good as something in say a gas powered oven or even in your home oven where you can use the broiler. I definitely want to do some more playing around with this oven though. I think if I modify the recipe a little bit, maybe add some more sugar to the dough, and even play around with the baking process a little bit more, I think I can get this even better. However, as it stands right now, if I do want to get the absolute best result, at least for this style of pizza that I really like to make, I'm probably going to stick with my home oven. But let me know in the comments if you have any specific recipes or things you want me to try out with this oven, and I can definitely make another video in the future. In the meantime, if you haven't seen my New York style pizza recipe that I made earlier in this video, you can check that out right here. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.